Hey everybody, so uh, for this video, I'm going to actually do a group theory problem. So we're actually going to get to apply all of the point group stuff that we just were going over. And um, so what we have here is a trigonal pyramidal nickel tetracarbonyl complex. And actually I think it's a tetrahedral complex, but for this we're just going to say it's trigonal pyramidal and I'm gonna go ahead and break the suspense and tell you that this is C3V point group okay and I chose C3V point group because the table is very small and it'll be really easy to go through this quickly because sometimes if these problems are really long and you've got a big table you gotta work through it can take up to an hour so we're just gonna do this and if you look at the C3V table it's pretty simple. You've only got three operations. You've got the identity operation, the C3 axis operation, and then of course you have your reflection plane. So what you want to do first is just write out a table, um, kind of like the table you have. and just start with the operations and the first thing you want to do is find this number called H and H is actually the total number of symmetry operations and I'll show you how you get H all you do is you just sum the coefficients of each operation so in this case it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 H equals 6 now it's important to know H because you can check yourself before you go in and make a large mistake later. Okay. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to try and put all of these, um, all the whole molecule through these symmetry operations and see how many atoms shift and how many don't. So we have five atoms here and so obviously with the identity operation none of them are going to move you've got all five still there now with the C3 the axis it's gonna go straight down through the top here so that top carbonyl and this nickel are not gonna move but these three will so for here you're going to want to put a 2. Okay. And for the reflection plane, it's kind of similar. Your plane's going to come up through three atoms like this. So you'll have that one in it, that one in it, that one in it, and these two are going to reflect across each other. So those are going to move. But you'll have a 3 here. Now slightly more complicated is something called the contribution per atom. And there's just a chart for this. So for the contributions per atom, E always equals 3. And C happens to equal 2 times the cosine of theta which in this case theta here is 120 degrees because that's our primary rotation axis C3 is 120 degrees plus 1 so 2 times cosine of 120 plus 1 is 0 and of course we'll put a 3 in here and for every reflection no matter what the contribution per atom is 1 so that's also very easy. Nice and simple. And I guess I should mention I is always negative 3. It's just the inverse of E. And S, it's 2 times the cosine of theta minus 1. So this is just something you kind of have to memorize, but it's not too bad really. Okay, so um, 
what you want to do now is multiply these two and then multiply that above this. And I know in your book it'll probably say you want to multiply this coefficient times the number of these and then you want to multiply it by the corresponding number in here. But I find it's easier if you just multiply everything ahead of time. So we're just going to call this our little temporary thing right here. So 5 times 3 times 1 is 15. And anything times 0 is 0. And 3 times 3 times 1 is 9. Okay? So now you have this. And you're going to want to go and check and make sure that this is a multiple of h or equal to h, which it is. It's 24. And 24 divided by 6 is 4, so we're good. 15 plus 9 is 24. Um, so, what I want to do now is let's take this and we're going to make a new page. So, here's your table. And remember, the ones that we calculated. We had nine, or um, I'm sorry. We had 15, zero, and nine. And remember, h was equal to six. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply each of these by the corresponding number in the matrix for this particular point group. So let's start with a1. The A1 operation is easy. Everything is 1. So you take 1 times 15 plus 0 times 1 plus 9 times 1. And that's going to equal 24. And then this product you're going to divide by H. So then you have 4 for A1. Okay. So now let's do A2. So we have 1, 1, and negative 1. So let's remember that. And we'll go in here. And we'll multiply this matrix by that one. So then we have 1 times 15 plus 0 times 1 plus negative 1 times 9. So in this case, we're going to get 6. And then you divide that by 6, so you get 1. And actually, um, this whole thing is multiplied by 1 over 6, just so that doesn't look weird mathematically to you, because I know that's not equal to the way it's written. Um, it's 1 over h is the thing. And then finally, we have one more operation we got to go through. It's e. It's 2, negative 1, and 0. So let's do E here. So 2 times 15, we're going to have 30 for that first one, plus 0, what was it again, and 0. Because remember, that's 0, so we're going to get 0 for that. And then the final number here was 0, so we're going to get another 0. So times 1 over 6 equals 30 over 6 and we're gonna get 5e so I'm gonna make another page we're gonna remember those numbers obviously it'll be easier if you're working this out on paper um, so we have 4 for a1 plus 1 for a2 And finally, we have 5e. So that 15, 0, and 9 that we found earlier, that's called a reducible representation. And these are irreducible representations. So we just found the irreducible representations that reducible representation was made up of. All right. Um, to find the rotational 
or to find the um, the infrared stretching bands, what you want to do is this is the whole molecule we calculated. If we we're just doing the ligands, it would be easier. But we calculated for the whole molecule. We included this central atom. So we need to subtract out the rotational modes of vibration and the translational modes of vibration. So first, let's subtract out the rotational modes of vibration. This RZ counts as 1. So we're going to subtract 1A2. And then this E, these two rotational modes of transformation, the RX and the RY, they transform together. So we're just going to subtract 1E also. So the rotational is minus 1A2 and minus 1E. And the translational is the Z, the X, and the Y. So we're going to subtract 1 up for the A1. Minus 1A1. And again, these transform together down here. So we only subtract 1 instead of 2. Minus 1E. And so finally, we're left over with um, 3A1, no A2, and 3E. And to find our infrared vibrational modes, we need to go back and consult the chart. Now infrared will give you vibration for translational modes. So you'll see there's a translational mode for A1. And there's also a translational mode for E. So as it happens, that's what we have. We have 3A1 and 3E. So you're going to get 3 plus 3 bands. So you're going to have 6 bands total. And for the Raman, you're going to get the same, actually. You look at this table over here. I'm sorry, let me move this. Um, that's for A1, and that's for E. And if you have anything over here, you're going to get Raman stretching. So again, it's going to be 3 plus 3 bands. You're going to get 6 bands total. And that's a really quick way, a really quick example of applied group theory. So. I hope that was helpful, and next time I'll try and do a longer problem, but I can't do them too long because, like I said, they can take a very long time, and there's a lot of calculations you got to do, as tedious as it is. But So I hope that helped.